This next part is getting into um, question eight. Why was voodoo important to enslaved people? Question nine. List three ways that enslaved people resisted their owners. So here, but enslaved people found other ways to resist slavery besides open revolt. Infanticide, see the word infant in there, uh, is killing one's own child. So they were almost like, I just don't want this poor child to live through this life that I have. And when the child was born, they would just kill it because they felt like they couldn't give it a good life. Suicide, they would kill themselves. And plots to kill the master or overseer were not uncommon. For many, resistance to slavery also meant finding ways to reaffirm their human dignity. For example, enslaved people across the island practiced voodoo. There's a reading about that on page 8. Other cultural activities, such as dancing, gave enslaved people ways to express themselves and have lives independent from the confines of, sl of slavery. So these are the different ways that they resisted um, the, all the oppression that was being put on them. So I'm going to bring out those questions. And you can copy these into your um, study guide. So for eight, why was voodoo important to enslaved people? It gave them some independent control of their lives. It helped them reaffirm their individual dignity. It strengthened social bonds that were not based on the system of slavery, a very powerful way of bringing people together and uniting them. The practice of voodoo, because it was forbidden by whites, made it a form of resistance. So again, anytime they practiced voodoo, which the whites said was illegal and that they couldn't do it, um, they were just basically saying, screw you, we still have some control over our lives. They would have to hide it, but they would still do it. And then list three ways that enslaved people resisted their owners. So even though it's only saying three, I want you to write down all of these because they're important. Infanticide, which is the killing of one's own infant. Suicide, plots to kill their master. Finding ways to reaffirm their human dignity. Voodoo and dancing. Runaways or maroons, which is going to be the next question. And this is going to be important to the revolution too. So... Um, these are the last two questions. Who were the Maroons and what was Mackendall's plot against the Whites? So that's what we're looking for next. And this is very cool. For This next part is going to tell you how um, Creole, the language of Creole, started. So many others chose to run away from the plantations. Commonly known as Maroons, these runaways fled to the interior mountain regions of the island and there they formed their own communities. Some joined with Maroons from Santo Domingo, which remember is the Spanish settlement in what is now DR. So they're up in the woods and they've escaped from uh, slavery and they're all so happy and they're trying to live up there and they're building their own community. Again, this is going to be really important to the revolution. It was in these communities that the Haitian language developed, mixing elements of Spanish, French, Portuguese, and a number of African languages. So it just makes that language of Creole so important because you can see that they desperately needed to communicate with each other all these different languages in order to stay away from uh, slavery and to help the people that were still in slavery. So they created their own language. Very cool. Um, while some remained in the Maroon communities, others fled to other towns in the colony and posed as free blacks. Many Maroons would run away for days or weeks at a time and then return to the plantations. Enslaved people who remained on the plantations would often provide Maroons with shelter, supplies, and information to help them evade capture. So they'd be sneaking around and they'd be getting food and getting it out to the Maroons 
and they pass on information. So it was like this whole secret thing happening on the island. Maroons were later crucial, which was so important to the fight for Haiti's independence. Maroon leaders were some of the revolution's most powerful figures, responsible for organizing attacks and uniting rebel groups throughout the colony. So here is who are the Maroons. Slaves that had run away and escaped to the interior mountain region of the island and created their own community. This is where the Haitian language was created, which was a mix um, between French, Spanish, Portuguese, and a number of African languages. And what is also important to add to your study guide for question 10 is, is this last sentence here. Maroon leaders were some of the revolution's most powerful figures um, and responsible for uniting these groups. And then the last question, what was Mackendall's plot against the whites? So here is Francoise Mackendall. As the 18th century progressed, there were some signs that enslaved people would not continue to accept Dominique's slave society. For example, the poisoning of planters in their families became a popular form of resistance. The most significant slave rebellion before the revolution was a plot to poison all the whites in the north of the colony. Because remember, they had the, the food and they were in charge of the farming and all of that. The conspiracy, which took place in 1757, was led by Francois Mackendal, a maroon leader who might also have been a voodoo priest. Mackendal intended for the plot to spread all to all parts of the colony, mainly through the actions of trusted house slaves. Those are the ones, the domestic slaves that worked in the house. Within a matter of months, Mackendall was captured, convicted, and he was killed, executed. His plot rattled whites in the colony, which mean got them so scared. Many towns passed further restrictions on the practice of voodoo. In some cases, in some areas, planters executed all of their slaves they just killed all of their slaves because they were so afraid that they would be poisoned. Torture and brutality by whites increased, but isolated cases of poisoning continued periodically for the rest of the century. Significantly, Mackendall's conspiracy had forged a network of resistance. So this was one of our vocabs too. So this is that whole secret... Um, society that's kind of the maroons and then the people living as slaves who were passing on information and food to the maroons. So that was the network of resistance, network of people among enslaved people of different from different plantations. Networks like this would be crucial in the revolution three decades later. So only 30 years from this point, they were about to take over. In addition, the story of Mackendall was told among enslaved people across the island, fueling the idea that resistance could be successful. So they were getting really pumped up that we don't have to live like this. We can do this together if we work together. We can overcome this. So this is the last question. What was Mackendall's plot against the white? And it was to poison all the whites on the island. So you're going to add that to um, your study guide. And this is the last part here. that um, You have just read about the creation of St. Saint, Saint Dominique and how the colonization of Hispaniola was related to Europeans, Europe's co competition for colonies in Americas. You have read about St. Dominique's economy, which is how they made so much money and how it happened so fast. It was fueled by the massive influx of slaves. So the only way they could have made that much money is to bring all of those slaves over. You have seen how the colonial structure oppressed people. So that structure just put those people of color down and they provided just a few protections for the slave population. You have also read about the ways in which enslaved people in the colony resisted slavery. So this whole paragraph is actually going to be really important going forward for the revolution in Haiti. In part two of the reading, you will explore the early events of the Haitian Revolution. Keep in mind what you have read about here as you consider questions such as what factors led to the outbreak of the revolution, 
the conflict. What did different groups in the colony hope to achieve? And how did European countries view their role in the Americas?